I'm James White, I'm the founder of InTouch and the founder of the InTouch Growth Academy and welcome to another edition of our Seven Figure Club podcast. So in this week's edition I had the uh, great uh, pleasure to interview Matt Garman. Um, Matt is the current, uh, he's the director of a company called Sales Plus Profit which offers uh, part-time sales directors to senior uh, businesses uh, across the UK but uh, Matt's got a background uh, in sales and in business and as an MD and within this edition talked about how when uh, he built up a business what he did to achieve that success and also what he uh, some of the lessons that he learned when he went through the process of selling the businesses that he worked with and uh, and getting to become part of the seven figure club himself and and actually uh, the journey that he went on as part of that so what I'm going to now do is uh, get straight into the interview. It was done through Zoom, which is a technology that Matt uses. So uh, bear in mind that some of the quality on the uh, on the call uh, was a little bit uh, difficult to to work through. But uh, hopefully, you'll love the the podcast and the messages that Matt's come through with. And uh, and as I say, you find something that you can use in your business to help you generate the sales that you want to. So here's the the next edition of the Seven Figure Podcast with Matt Garman from Sales Plus Profit. Okay, um, welcome to the next edition of the Seven Figure Plug uh, podcast, and I'm um, delighted to have uh, Matt Garman, who's the uh, CEO of Sales Plus Profit, on the line. Hi, Matt. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you very much. Excellent stuff. So, so Matt, obviously, we've been uh, I've known you guys for 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 quite a while now in terms of what you're doing at Sales Plus Profit. But tell everyone a bit about Sales Plus Profit and also what you did before Sales Plus Profit, because I know we talked. You'd started a business and sold that business, and tell me sort of a bit of background of sort of you know. A, where you were and, and obviously where you're on to now and, and, and what the next challenge is with you with, with Sales Plus Profit. Yeah, sure. So uh, set Sales Plus Profit up at the end of uh, at the end of 2012, beginning of 2013. Ultimately, what we do is we provide um, flexible sales leaders to go into organizations for growth, optimization and exit. Uh, it was probably stimulated it stimulated from getting a, f- a phone call at the end of 2012 by one of my ex clients he, he he rung me in a state of frustration and asked me if I would go and beat up and hit his sales team <laughs> uh, having spent a, a little bit of time in there it was it struck me that a lot of his pains were fairly standard sales challenges and set about addressing that and we we spent I, I personally spent about a day day and a half a week with them over a four or five month period of time and, and and we got them a lot more clarity than they had done before so i guess it, and it's, it's interesting isn't it because like you know sales and and uh, we work with another guy you know who does finance it's one of those areas where actually you know people think oh it's easy enough to do but you know yourself and, and of our conversations it, it really is requires expertise and knowledge isn't it in the right areas to to help people um make the difference that they really want to in their business i guess what uh, what i tend to find is that is that most most organizations that we work with many or many organizations that we work with and and we tend to work between sort of two and 20 million pound organizations and there's a number of you know there's a number of similarities in the organisation. Sometimes it's the ownership. Sometimes uh, you know it's the structure of the organisation. Typically, mo- most people have been on courses and, and, and know lots and lots of the answers. But but typically with uh, owner managed businesses, it comes down to it comes down to purely bandwidth and or, or, or lack of capacity. Uh, if you're dealing with, uh, you know, if you're a busy CEO or a busy MD and you're one of those people who is also the figurehead of sales, it's very, very difficult to, to wear those multiple hats. And those are the sorts of some of the organizations and clients that we work with. Not all, so we work with some quite large companies as well. But where we tend to do quite well is when uh, an organization either... Um, they are, you know, if you if you're dead serious about growing, then typically what people either do is is, you know, they go looking for that for that magic bullet to solve those solve those uh, those growth challenges, and invariably sometimes that makes that means uh, a big ticket higher, and we've all heard quite a few uh, quite a few stories about you know paying lots and lots of money. But perhaps not, and not ne- not necessarily getting the return on investment that, that the owners and CEOs and boards and investors are looking for, and that's where we do. So we look we look at look at providing that on an agile basis, and you know sometimes it's a steady in the ship exercise, and sometimes it's a create creating the plan and the strategy moving forward, and also indeed helping helping an organisation really be clear on what the next sales director 
when and help help that organisation on board and uh, and you know recruit and on board the, the permanent hire, so that we can kind of uh, we can step away. Yeah, makes perfect sense. And and and, and tell me, you know, obviously before you set this up and you were doing this, tell me more about your background, Matt. And because obviously you've been in business for a number of years, and you've you know you've been in companies and sold companies and been involved in it. You know, tell me, give, give us a polite history of your background and what you know when when you you know before you started Sales Plus Profit as well. And because I know you've got so much a lot of experience when we've talked and, and a lot of years under the belt of well, it's, and engaging and, and working in different businesses. So. I suppose it's a very unconventional background, but it's probably quite the conventional background from a. Um, it's quite a conventional background from an entrepreneur's perspective. And my, my first job, I, firstly, I have, no, I have no formal qualifications at all. Uh, my first job was a, was a tea boy on a trawler in the English Channel. Yeah, and I ended up doing that for quite some time. Uh, sadly, one of the guys on one of the boats got killed. Oh, no. And it, uh, it, it got me thinking. And I, I, I left that and I stumbled into my first sales job in the very early 20s, which was selling life insurance. Yeah. Uh, commission only for those people who have never tried it. It's, uh, it certainly gets you focused. Um, then found myself, I quite like selling, I quite like the, the, the thinking and the, and, and the structure and the whole working with people. Uh, I then got involved with an IT, a small IT business down in Eastbourne and we set about, uh, I, I, I was their first salesperson and then um, having a minor disagreement with the MD, I ended up um, buying that business and remortgaging my house. Blimey, so that, that must have been, a, a, you know, going, you know, telling people that are listening to this, going through that reward, and I, and I have to say, I, I know what it's like to go through and make, those, well, not what sort of decisions like that, but it must be a moment of, bloody hell, what am I doing? Did you get that, or did you... Oh, you very much so, very much so, you know, um, it's the proper cold sweats, have we got enough, have I, have I made mistakes, you know, have I made mistakes, what have I done? Um, and um, yeah, it was it was the, it was the first, also it was remortgaging the, the first house that I bought with my girlfriend now wife. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that then everything it was it was one of that feeling where yeah everything you're all in absolutely all in. But we did well, um, and I, I successfully sort of exited that business after about six seven years. I paid all the loans back after three or four years. And um, but one of the things, one of the learnings from that, it got me so focused on the sales, on, on methodical um, structure and process around sales because it, was, it had to be pure. It, we had to get the numbers. We had to hit the numbers. And I think that's one of the things, one of the cornerstones that's got me, got me when I started developing Sales Plus Profit, I thought that was uh, you know, that, that's, that whole clarity needed, um, mm. which is where we all, we, we all fall into it. We fall into that haze and fuzziness at times as, as business owners. Whereby you're not a hundred percent sure, you know. Some, you know, we, we I think I, I generally make the best decisions with gut feel, but you yeah. have to back it up with some logic and some 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 facts as well. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, no, took that business and then got involved with a software company um, in near, near Guildford, and we grew that company as well um, from 2007 through to 2012, and then we we sold that to a company that was backed by private equity. So that was it was great fun. Great people, and then, um, as I say, set sales plus profit up at the end of 2012 after a quite enjoyable summer watching the 2012 Olympics and competing in a competing in a crazy Ironman event in Germany. But yeah, yeah we're, we're going to come on and talk about some of your triathlon stuff in a sec. But just going back to the time when you you know bought and built the businesses up and stuff. You know, when you, are the things that you know you know you look back now and think, oh, I wish I'd have, you know done some of those things you know years ago. Things you learned from building up those businesses at the time and and getting them to the point where they could you know sell. Is there any advice for people listening to the things that you did then? You think you, these are the things you definitely need to do when you're building a business like that? I think I think um, building get get acknowledging that you're not good at everything, mm -hmm. working out what you are good at. And also equally working out what you're not good at and, and make sure you've got good people are in those areas that you're, you're not quite so good at. Um, I think one of the things, one of the failings or one of the things that I could have done better in the first business, I think I tolerated a little bit too much of, I was too tolerant, to, too tolerant of some sort of average attitudes and average behaviors mm -hmm. and actually getting, getting rid of a couple of people, um, 
who were weren't quite running at the pace that I wanted to take the business. I think that proved to be that proved to be a very very good decision. Sadly, I wasn't bright enough to have kind of worked that one out in the early days. It's funny you mention that. It's funny you mention. Oh, sorry, very well. It's also working out that you know you don't know what you don't know. So I I I I've spent quite a lot of time looking and and, and asking questions of of businesses that I would kind of look up to and aspire to and also spend a lot of time with people that aren't of your natural um uh you know your natural group so i you know i i'm i'm sales and outgoing but i tend to spend spend time with you know i I try and gain information and knowledge from people that are perhaps more technically orientated and 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 more, maybe more finance orientated. So people have got a different perspective on some of the things that we need to have as, as an MD or a CEO of a company. Yeah, and I guess it's interesting because you know Dwayne Jackson, who I did the uh, one of the other Seven Figure Club podcasts with, he he said to me one of the adages he learned, you know, was was hire slow and fire fast. And I guess from what you've just sort of said, that sort of backs up that point of sometimes you've got to get people in with you on the journey, and if they don't, then you've got to make tough decisions quite early on rather than than letting things drift away. I guess. Absolutely, absolutely. In actual fact, that's one I use as well. So yeah, hire hire slowly, fire quickly. Definitely, yeah. definitely. definitely. Exactly. There's, a, there's another there's another great one i don't know if it's um i don't know if it's a great if it's one to go on a, on a podcast but i listened to a former apple executive once and uh, he gave a fantastic talk and um and he just said the one line he said i'd rather have a hole in my business than an asshole in my business <laughs> no i think so, you know what it's exactly right and 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 I think it's important, especially when you're building companies and, and, and a lot of the people that listen to this podcast and our podcast are, are businesses that are starting up or quite small. And you know, it's, a, it's a natural tendency to try and recruit someone and fill a gap. But actually, you've got to make sure you fill the right gap with the right people, isn't it? Because otherwise, it can actually be a big detriment to your business and, and take you backwards rather than forwards. So. Definitely, definitely. You've got to, have, you've, got to have, you've got to have good people and look after them as well. Look after them. Yeah. I think, I think that's one of the things that um, you know, when you find those good people as well is I think – loyalty you know culture i think business culture has changed certainly in the 20 or so years i've been in business you know we are i think we are we are we all aspire to have great cultures in our businesses and i i it, it you know it wasn't quite such a big, big buzzword as it is these days but um i think it's really and i you know to me it was in the past it was it was somebody once said to me you know you just you've got to got to, got to look after your good people yeah. And I think you know if you can build if you can build a business around that then then great. And, and tell me when you when you went through the process and obviously we'll move on to sales plus profit and what you're doing now in, in a second. But when you went through the process of selling that business, was that a stressful time? Sort of getting you know bit, getting when you know when you and, and you know, decided that you wanted to change and, and do something different. How you know the process? Because a lot of people that start a business they go through it, they want to build it up and then sell it and you know and, and do something different. Was it a stressful period for you when you went through that process, or was it actually quite easy? It's, it was a very stressful period. I mean, fortunately, we had a great uh, we had a great finance director. I, I, I had a we had a good we had a good board. Uh, we had an absolutely magnificent operations manager who we got involved in that. Um, we we shared we shared that that, that 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 was you know as a likely yeah. outcome. We shared with her, and, and, and I'm, I'm if I'm being altogether honest, um, there were I was only you know uh, it was very very stressful as an owner. But it was made significantly less stressful by some good decisions to get good people involved. Yeah, and I think the other thing is 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 you know there's always times in our lives when we have to economise. We're getting professionals, getting getting professionals um, at the right time is uh, is very very important. It's it's really it's a really good link into now to sales plus profit, I guess, in terms of what you you mean you know, what you say there because I'm actually I've talked to. Sarah, can you just pause it? All right, yeah. I'll, I'll, well, can we pick this call up? I've got to... Sorry, I'm on my Sorry, James. Go on. No, worry, no worries whatsoever. No worries whatsoever. Um, yeah, so I was going to say, it sort of leads very well on in you know, what you were saying there about when you were going to sell the business and having the right people on board. It's, you know, it leads on to what you do with sales plus profit, actually, because... And there's another client we've got on the Growth Academy, um, you know, Matthew Broadbent, who talks about bringing in part-time finance directors of high calibre and bringing the expertise of really good senior people is well worth that investment, isn't it, to bring them in to, to get them to where you want them to be in your business. So, 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we, one of the biggest, absolutely, and particularly on sales, it's such a visible part of any company. Mm. And one of, the, one of the failings that we quite often see is that organizations, um, they'll take on, they'll either hire what, uh, what they deem to be a sales director or, or, or they'll promote, which is, I'm sure many, many business owners can relate to that, they'll promote their best salesperson or their most experienced salesperson, sometimes incorrectly into that, you know, director type role. And, and quite a lot of times it doesn't work out. And, and, and I'm a big, what, what, I, what I think, uh, um, and sometimes when I talk at events, it's about working out the actual skills that you need in your sales function not necessarily titles. We're not, we're not hiring job titles. We're actually looking, what are we trying to, we have, we have you know, we've got tasks and we've got roles that we need to fulfill. We don't have job titles that need, you know. So, so it's, 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 it's looking at it with, with that, okay, what, what does the ideal output need to be? Because quite a lot of, sadly, there's lots of, lots we've all heard, as I said before, we all heard stories of, of, of hires that don't work out and they're very, very costly. Very, very costly. And not only that, there's the internal disruption as well. Yeah, no, I've seen that myself in, in you know in, in in business where you actually come in and like say anyone that comes in, it's a new person and they've got different ideas and different thoughts and like you say, it's about being able to bring someone. I guess they've also got to be able to add value, and I guess in the process you've got to have people that can add value to what you do and, and what you're building as a business in that respect. So, but well, it's, it's taking ownership. It's taking ownership. You know, it's taking ownership of that sales function and saying, look, it needs to look like this. Yeah, okay. this is this is a this is what a best practice would look like. And this is what a best practice should look like. And what we tend to, you know, you tend to walk, you tend to work with with an organisation. You look at the, the resources, the people, the structure that it's got at that particular period of time, and try and work out what, dare I say, best in class or world class would look like for that organisation, and try and set them on a course for for, for that. But but the good thing is, is obviously coming in as a, dare I say, as an outsider. You there's no there's no baggage there. Yeah. You can just get about it, you know. And if 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 people are really genuinely um, have that commitment and that desire and that ambition to move forward, then I'm, you know, we we, you know, I'm not, it's not a pitch, but we, you know, it's a very very cost effective way of getting high quality people into the organisation and sometimes getting them thinking in a different way than they had done beforehand. Yeah, no, no, definitely. And, and just finish off sort of where you were before. When you, when you, you know, you sold out in the end of the business. You did. Did you? Uh, did you? Go, did you go and celebrate with your wife and your family? Did you? You know, what was that feeling like when you actually sort of finally said to someone, "Yeah, right, okay, you can have this business." What's the? Is it? You know, describe it to people in in the sense of the word. You know, how you felt that evening. And was it a get the champagne open, or was it just relief? Well, or? We've we've gone through. No, if it sounds really dull, actually, no, we've gone through that whole um, gone through that whole very stressful period of time. Where you're doing it, you're doing the deal, but you know there's an awful lot of your your staff don't know that the deal's been going on. Yeah, uh, we had to. Firstly, as part of the deal, I would, if anyone's going through that, I would advise you, advise you keep selling. Do not let yourself. Don't stop selling. Yeah, because, you know if you start moving, you know start thinking the deal's done before the deal's done, and you know start dreaming of of that beforehand. Then that's and for one reason or another, it may not go through. Yeah, the sales have got a dip. Or if it does go, it, it does go through, and your sales not a dip, then it's the reason for it's a fairly good reason for the Grim Reaper to appear some stage in the in the discussions, which is not pleasant for anyone. Yeah. But we we um, we saw. I think I I, I did set my set an alarm clock for two o'clock in the morning to have a look and log on to my internet banking, which is. <laughs> um, I then I treated myself to a new pair of shoes because I've always been quite a frugal individual. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, and then I say I'd, I'd already immersed myself in this this Ironman thing in Germany, which I was doing. So I took it was great. So I had a lot of time training for that. I had a lot of time booking some return tickets to the Olympics, which was fantastic. Yeah. But I'm being altogether honest, um, towards the end of the summer holiday, after we get all that out of the way, it's it was a really really. Uh, diff almost diff I wouldn't say uncomfortable or depressing kind of way but there is that sense and I've spoken to other people who've sold companies as well that you do you do sometimes lose your purpose <laughs> well I used to run this company and nobody's ringing me at the moment so I need to, you know so you and, and waking up or getting into a coffee shop at 10 30 with with um, you know and sitting there wondering what the day is is not a good 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 place so so you know 
getting myself back into another business was 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 very very important. And I guess we'll, and we'll talk about sales with Buff in a sec. But I guess that was why you probably then got it because you know I guess if you're going to do an Ironman challenge, that's like you know you can't. There's no uh, there's no getting up at ten thirty in the morning. I guess that's six or thirty challenges in the sea and swimming and running and whatever else. So I guess you, you did you move into that challenge quite quickly, thinking right, I've got to go and get my head focused on something else. Now. I was I I'd, I'd already committed to it from the year before. But right, what, okay. what it did give me is it gave me a lot of it gave me some free runway and an awful, awful lot of free time. So yeah. I spent quite a lot of time cycling, which was which I needed to do. Um, and yeah, that was, but it was hard work. I've got, but you know, I'm sure there's lots of people that have done lots of lots of Ironmans and lots of challenges. Um, but to me, I've got no desire to do another one at this particular moment in time. But notwithstanding the fact that it was it was great fun, but bloody hard work. And, it, and, it, and moving on to you know where, where, when you started sales plus profit, I guess it sort of shows as well, like you said, that actually you know the, the element of the of the, the sale wasn't the key thing for you. It was actually the element of running the business and driving the business forward. And I guess that's why you set up you know sales plus profit because you actually wanted that you know to, to have that element of taking on some building something else new again. And, and that sort of drive, I guess, never never stops in, in successful people, does it? You, you know, you want to continue to do something and, and do move on to the next chapter rather than saying, right, I'm going to, you know, put my feet up and, and sit and like you say, what can you drink coffee for the rest of my life? Yeah, I, I, I am, I am a very driven, driven person. And, and I think that's, but I think that's most entrepreneurs are, are very driven people, but I think um, it's, it, I think what, what, what we all fall in from time to time is we, we get bogged down. We get bogged down with businesses, and 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 you know, I'm not personally. I'm not one of those people that probably. I'm not going to be happy unless my businesses are in the you know the, in the top sort of five or one percent of whatever they're going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, you know, I, I want it to. Con- I want to constantly be developing forward, and you know, we've spoken already. You know, so we're in a position now. So sales plus profit. So within three years, we, you know, we're rolling out nationwide. We're just about to open up in Australia. So yeah, we got some, we got some, got some big plans. And yeah, I, I, it, I, I think if um, you know, I'm, I've, I've never been one. I've never had a proper job, so I've never. I don't think I would be. I don't. I'm not very good at just doing the nine to five. And, and what's the vision for Sales Plus Profit in the next? You know, if I see the next three years, is it to build this business up again so you can be in a position where you go through the same? I guess this the circular process of, of building up and, and selling again is that the ambition to, or is it just the ambition at the moment just to continue sort of doing, enjoying what you do and see what happens? Or have you got? I think. Things? I think at the moment there's a there's an element of there's an element of what we're doing which is which is excitement of trying to create ultimately create a new mm. you know, the, the, the market and the world you know so whether you like it or not you know there's an awful there's a shift towards portfolio based working and people wanting flexibility yeah. and uh, you know it's been around there for a while in perhaps in finance or even you know people outsourcing you know HR and things like that so I think it's been there for a while so, but from a sales perspective I think we're kind of you know that we're still developing a marketplace so the next the next few years is going to be excitement. I, will, I very, very much want to see sales plus profit as, as the complete number one, certainly in the UK. Um, and I do believe that we will end up with probably four or five places or territories overseas, whether that's license offices or whatever. And, and you know, from, from, from fairly basic, dare I say, humble kind of beginnings, it, it, sometimes it's, it's quite. It sounds quite scary, you know. You you talk about those sorts of things, and it's, it it almost think, well, am I getting above myself? But then the reality of it is, is like, well, why the hell not? You know. Yeah, well, and I think, but also, you know, that's a, you know, and I've learned you know a lot from you know from talking to you as well, and a lot of people is that it's that like you say you've even though you've been there and done things and sold things and made things happen, you're still actually saying, well, I've got to start from scratch again here, and I, excuse me, I've got to build this up, I've got to make it happen, I've got to do what I need to do, and and all of that doesn't come without hard work and without focus and without drive, does it? I guess you would, whatever you go in any start, you've got to, you've got to get back and then start again to build something up. So. Yeah, it's not, but it's, it's also, it's, it, yeah. Do we want it to be, do we want it to be big? Yeah, we want it to be, yeah, we do want it to be big, but what, what I would, you know, what I want it to be is I want it to be really, really a, a really high quality organization. Mm. And I think going back to, you know, I've spoken to people before and, and who have been very have made you know multiple exits and been very successful. But and and one particular person springs to mind, and, and, and they were only interested in building brilliant business because if they, if they had, because they knew that if they built a brilliant business, somebody would buy it and somebody would pay a premium for it. 
Yeah, and I think it's, it's a really good point, and I think something I've talked to in in in, uh, in, in the other guys that I've been speaking to on the, the Seven Figures Club, all that saying that same thing. If you build that culture, if you build, if you don't settle for second best, if you always aim for you know the highest where you can be and build that brilliant feeling and successful feeling, then then like you say, other people want that. They want to be part of that, and they want to they want to acquire that, don't they? So, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So no, we're we're uh, you know it's it's I think times are interesting. Um, yeah. you know what the heck, you know, obviously with the with the Brexit, Brexit stuff, I think it's going to be interesting and a little bit mixed over the next few years. But I'm, uh, it's very, very exciting at the same time. I think since you mentioned about the Brexit, I know you know conscious of time and your time, Matt. But you know, in terms of you know, a lot of people are worried about things. But I guess my you know my stance is very much a case of it is what it is. Now you have got to make the best of it. Is that especially in sales? It's a real key thing, isn't it? Because people, are, you know, if you're not careful, you let yourself get beaten before you start. Which in sales is not the way to be. Have you found people that are starting to? sort of say, no, I'm not going to be beaten before I start. And I'm going to, and, and you and the guys at Salesforce Profit, making sure you sort of put that firm foot forward and say, you know, we're going to build something here and we forget whatever happens externally. We, we, we'll make it happen from a sales perspective. I think, I think you, it's like anything in a competition. You know, in, in, you know, what, what the, in a competition, sadly, you know, we, we're at Rio Olympics at the moment and I'm sure all the superstars, all they want yeah. gold medals. In sales, there is only one prize, and that's the sale. So yeah. you know, there's plenty of times, sadly, where I've got a dear John letter, and a, it was a you know you, you you were a very close second, but sadly that doesn't really count for anything. So yeah. I think I think there's a huge amount of opportunity out there. Um, I think certainly for sales plus profit, and you know some 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 organisations I'm sure are going to be going to be perhaps a little bit more. Um, mindful i think with with this it's like anything else in life where there's change there's opportunity yeah definitely i think you just need you just need to don't linger on the past decisions are made let's crack on and um, and, and and work out what those opportunities are and and, and go after them with yeah. as much energy and uh, you know and enthusiasm as you can throw at it no, no, it makes perfect sense. And, and just sort of finally, a couple of things really in terms of sort of three things, you know, really useful people, you know, the, the, the listeners on the podcast, three things you've learned in business that you think, or, or two or three things you think are really, you know, important things for business. And also then two or three tips in sales from, you know, a guy that's been there and done it in, and worn the t-shirt for sales perspective, two or three tips in, you know, what, what are the, you know, if you, it's a lot of the people that we, you know, that listen to this are, are potentially business people that are good at what their product is, but not maybe good at sales and they're sort of trying to work out how to improve. Any tips you've got on how to be, become, do more, do better at sales and also, you know, general in business how to succeed? Oh, that's a good, thanks, James. That's one. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was going to say it might be a general one, but it's more. I would, okay. say, I would say do, do what you say you're going to do. And I say that from an internal perspective, but also from an external perspective. You know, staff, staff want to know that when you say you're, you know, you're going to do something, yeah. uh, you're going to do it, and you commit to them. Um, B, I think there's a couple of times in instances earlier on in my career with businesses, I was perhaps less less um, sympathetic to to a couple of staff issues than than I ought to be. So again, it goes back to my point about you know look after the good people, um, okay. look after good people around you, and I, 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 I am again it's a bit of an old fashioned thing. Um, I do believe in loyalty as well. You know, mm. I work as hard as I can and I give as much as I can, and probably that probably yeah I'd probably say probably give more than you take if that makes sense. That sounds a little bit idealistic, but if you you know if somebody asks for something, try and give them as as much as they ask for, if not a little bit more. I think as much as yeah. anything else. Brilliant. Well, well uh, I think um, un- under promise and over deliver. Yeah, on the, I think those are really great. Like you say, from a sales perspective, if you do that with customers and look after them well, you're, you're never going to go far wrong. So, um, well, 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 look, Matt, it's been it's been fantastic to share some of your ideas and thoughts. I really appreciate your time on the uh, on this. And as I say, we uh, I know that uh, people that are listening to this podcast. It's a new series that we started, so um, it's great that you're going to be number three on that series. And uh, and looking forward to sharing your 
you know some of your thoughts and ideas and, and, and wisdom to uh, to a lot of the users so i just want to say thanks very much i appreciate your time i know you're busy and i know you've got lots on so i'm going to leave you leave you to it and um uh, and say uh, you know as i say we really appreciate it and um as i say i know if, if people it's a final thing from you i guess people can get in contact with you at sales plus www.salesplusprofit.com and um and i think you're uh, you guys are on on social media as well in the normal places if they want to reach out and and, and chew the chew the cut over sales based issues i guess really and absolutely to- absolutely and, and you know that's not you know that's not just a, a sales pitch you know if anyone you know has a simple questions or stuff like that we're always open and accessible and stuff like that yeah well, much appreciated at all Great stuff. All right. Well, well thanks so much, Matt. Well, what we'll do is, uh, as I say, we'll say uh, as a finale on the, on the podcast, that's uh, Matt Garman from Sales Plus Profit. And um, we uh, really appreciate his time and, and, and his energy and enthusiasm. I know if you get a chance to meet Matt, go and definitely do and we'll hear him speak. He's uh, certainly worthwhile uh, getting a chance to listen to. So uh, thanks to Matt for all his time and effort. And um, as I say, what we'll be doing, we'll be following up with the next series of the Second Think Seven Think Club podcast in, in the next two weeks. So um, that's it from uh, this, this edition. And um, thanks to Matt for his time and I look forward to the next session next week. So there you have it. That was the latest edition of the Seven Figure Club with Matt Garman from Sales Plus Profit. I hope you found the interview really useful and uh, with lots of great tips and ideas. And again, some of the themes that are generated here from Matt, from Dwayne Jackson, from Alec Johnson that we've uh, spoken to are common in terms of being able to uh, to work at getting uh, a focus on what you need to achieve and, and, and really driving culture and making sure that uh, people are key to, to, to what you do to achieve success. Um, I hope you found uh, this edition really interesting. And uh, if you haven't, take a look at the other Seven Figure, seven figure Club podcasts that we've done. And uh, we're always on the lookout for people who want to join our seven figure po- our podcast series and be in a position where they can uh, contribute and provide their expertise and advice and insight uh, to help other people as well. So if you're one of those people, please get in contact with us here at In Touch the Growth Academy and we'd be really pleased to, to hold that with you. And uh, if you're not, and if you just enjoyed um, the, the podcast themselves and what we've got, uh, the advice given, please share your thoughts on the comments section uh, underneath or go to our website at intouchcrm.com and give us your thoughts and views, uh, views there as well. So as I say, it, these sessions are designed to help you as a business owner get more success. And by learning from the best in the industry and the experts, the people that have been there and done it and sold businesses, we can all grow and pick up something from that. So that's it from me. As I say, I'm James White. I'm the founder of InTouch and the founder of the InTouch Growth Academy. Until the next time, and until the next Seven Figure Club podcast, take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.